Well, good morning and welcome. I'm well, glad you're here. I'm Joe Green, the senior pastor here at First Broad Street, and we're just glad to see you. Isn't this a great day to worship? Yes. Do you have any trouble parking today? Is that to have you found your place like you have in a pew? And uh, I hope that uh, we, we still have room for some folks, so you may want to invite. We're getting into the fall now. It's time to really invite people that are coming in, and they are... They're just We have seats up front, folks, if y'all look in the front of the sprinkles right down here. I don't know these people, but they will probably not be back. Uh, this is Buford and Phyllis Hankin, by the way, if you don't know them. They're fairly nice people. You'll want to greet them afterwards. Uh, be sure and sign the uh, register there at the end of the pew and pass that across if you would. Uh, just a few announcements. You can read them all. Remember, today's the fifth Sunday. You take up the offering for the host and home. And so be sure and, and check that out. I want to mention that, that uh, about our Oklahoma mission this year, we're building a church out there. And that mission is September the 23rd through October the 2nd. But there'll be an informational meeting on August the 9th. That's a week from Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And I'll remind you again next week. But, but uh, if you want to be a part of something exciting that First Broad Street's doing, uh, be sure and, and uh, check this out on August the 9th. But you, you may want to be a part of that. Another thing, our prayer guide, you can get those out in the narthex for August. Uh, you can pick that up out there. And it's the pink one. And be sure... I, I, in fact, I wore a tie to kind of match that, so uh, be sure and uh, pick up one of those. Um, I want to mention that on August the 14th, that's in two weeks, two weeks, at 8.30, at our 8.30 and 10.45 services, um, Bishop David Graves will be with us, and he's a good friend of mine, and I know a good friend of yours. As soon as he was elected... I text him and say, congratulations, when can you come to First Broad Street? He texted me back and said, thanks, uh, I'll call you Monday. And so he's coming August the 14th. And so uh, uh, we will not have on that one Sunday, and that one Sunday only, we'll not have a 940 service because these services may bleed over. At, at noon on that day, we'll have a reception for, for David and, and Nancy here at the church. So we certainly invite you. Also, you'll note at the bottom of, of, your, uh, of your announcement sheet, August the 10th, we begin our, our Wednesday night live. We start those again for the year, so I hope that, that you'll make reservations to come and be with us. I do want to mention this, uh, this display up here in and just ex express my gratitude to the altar guild. You guys come up with such awesome, uh, awesome uh, settings like this, and, and we just are thankful for you. Any of the members of the altar, altar guild here? Right there, there's one. There's, how many are there? There's five. And, and do an awesome job, thank you. The other four are probably at the beach, and... Uh, <laughs> So expect next week will probably be an interesting setting up here. You know that? So be sure and come and uh, check that out. You know, um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Why don't we take a moment and just greet each other and pass the peace, okay? There's nothing like the sound of when God's people are together and they are fellowshipping. And there's nothing like worshipping together. 
And so now I invite you to join me in the call to worship that's printed in your order of worship. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. Let the body of Christ sing praises to God from whom all blessings flow. Apostles' Creed as printed in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
summer afternoon, summer afternoon. Henry James said those are the two most beautiful words in the English language. But now summer afternoons are slipping away and it's time for two other words. School days, school days. <laughs> a new school year can be exciting, but it can also be a little bit scary. A day at school can be great, and a day at school can be hard. But we want all of our students and our school personnel to know that no matter if the day is hard, no matter if it's easy, if it's exciting, if it's scary, Jesus is right there, walking with each student, supporting each teacher, supporting each school personnel, and guiding each parent and each mentor. So this morning, if you are a student, preschool through postgraduate, would you come forward and participate in a litany of blessing for back to school. Any students? And teachers, both retired and present. Public school, private school, home school, church school. Please come join us in the litany. Come on forward, we're going to have a large crowd here this morning. And school personnel, if you drive our bus, if you work in our cafeterias, if you help in the office, if you help during the school year, please join those down front. And then if you'll face me, those of you down front, because I'm going to ask you to participate in this litany when I indicate by saying, Jesus is with me. And congregation, those of you left out there, I'll ask you to help at the end of this litany by saying, may God bless you, and also join me in the prayer. The litany is printed in your order of worship. As you begin a new school year, Every minute of every day, Jesus is with you. Before school, when you wake up, eat breakfast, grab your backpack or your books, your jacket or your keys, and head out the door. On your way to school, whether walking or in a car or on a bus. At school. In the classroom or in the hallway? In the cafeteria or the teacher's lounge? On the playground or the practice field? And when your school day is finished and you are back at home? Every day and every night, all the time and everywhere? As your church family, we, this congregation, ask God's blessing on each of you, saying together, May God bless you. May God bless each one of you gathered here today, and may he guide you with his grace. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for always being by our sides, summer afternoons and school days. We are thankful for your loving presence. Amen. Now, when you leave the sanctuary today, there's a small token for you to take with you in your school day, either on your backpack, in your pocket, on your keychain. But if you'll pick one of those up. Children, as we go back to our seats, you may go to godly play. Now, may God bless each of you. Thank you.
As we pray together this morning, I will be praying at the altar. If you'd like to join me, we certainly invite you to do that. But let's unite our hearts as we pray together. Father, we, uh, we pray for our children, our grandchildren today, these young people that have, uh, have come forward in this service and in services uh, uh, 
really all morning and, and probably all over, I'm sure, all over this community, all over the country as people, uh, as these young people are getting ready to, to go back to school. And as they return, Lord, we pray your blessing on each one. We pray for the teachers, the administrators, all those who are, are involved in the, uh, in the education process. As you are so faithful, that you have done everything I need to be, uh, everything I need to be saved, to be forgiven, to be free from the things that mess up my life. Lord, I know and we know that you will meet the special needs of every child. You know the circumstances of every home from which they come, the challenges of those who lead. So we lift them all up to you, Lord. We continue to pray. And as we pray for our children and the opportunities of the new school year, we are thankful for the opportunities before us. As is said, may the rest of our lives be the best of our lives, no matter what our age. Forgive us for allowing any garbage to fill our hearts and minds. Help us to never stop believing in you and trusting your word. To never stop learning ourselves. To be students of your word. Help us to spend time with you every day, to renew our minds again with your word, to not neglect our daily quiet time listening to you. Speak to our hearts. Stretch our imagination to, to new possibilities, Lord, for you and with you. Give each of us your dream, your vision, your goal, your plan, uh, your purpose for our lives, that we not miss a heartbeat of your will. And Lord, this morning as we pray, we pray for those in the hospital. We pray for Janie Hobbs and George Warwick and, and, and uh, Billy Middow. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, touch, heal, make whole. We celebrate the birth of Adrian James Hong, son of Adrian and Jennifer, and grandson of Ted and Jolene Province. We praise you for this new life. We also thank you for Camille Helen Cusenberry, daughter of Eric and Brittany, granddaughter of David and Pat Quisenberry. And Father, again, for this birth, we are thankful for the new life that, that you bring in our midst, Father. And Lord, we celebrate Jesus today. We celebrate with, without holding back everything within us. We are thankful for the one that, that you sent, our, our Savior, who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. it's time to present our tithes and offerings and give back to God what he has so generously given to us.
we thank you for your steadfast love and mercy. We thank you for knowing our needs before even we know them and for providing for us so very richly. All things come from you, God, and with gratitude we return to you what is yours. You created all that is and with love formed us in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so, in gratitude for all your gifts, we offer you ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Bless these tithes and offerings through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Join me in the prayer for illumination. Shine within our hearts, loving God, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our minds and hearts that we may understand and embrace the message of the scripture. Amen. Our scripture today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 13. Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you may be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. I hope you noticed your bulletin and, and the... Uh, the front of it, where it says, when, when is Jesus with you before, during, or after school? And you'll see notes there. Those are our, our children. And then on the side here, the side margin there on the left, and also inside there are remarks from adults, but uh, um, certainly uh, something that is, is uh, a blessing. So I hope that you'll check that out. Of course, not during the message, Certainly appreciate the choir. We have room here for others, too, if you'd like to join the choir. Uh, seriously, if you'd like to join the choir. It's a great fellowship and uh, it's a good time, you know, good opportunity to lead people in worship. So I encourage you, okay? You with me? Hello? You, you know, uh, last week we started talking about exercise a little bit, and, and you remember I was talking about holding those... Uh, those uh, uh, 50-pound potato bags. You remember that? And, and, then, and then I talked about that at the end, about finally, after you've done that for several weeks, to put a potato in each bag. And, and uh, you know, I could tell just the thought of it, people were sweating when they were leaving. And, and someone told me this week that they weren't so bold to do that, but they did take the 50-pound bags and put half a potato in each one. And... and uh, if you wonder who that is, they're among us this morning, they're wearing a muscle shirt, so uh, 
they're really proud of themselves for all they have done. But, but I thought on this particular Sunday, as we go back to school as, as a children, I, I used to, goodness, this, this was a tough day for me. Really, in the middle of July in Appalachia, there was a drugstore named Max, and he would start uh, advertising his, his pencils and his, you know, the tablets and all those things, and he'd say, back to school, and I, I just wanted to go in and tear his displays down and just ruin my summer. But here we are starting a new year, and it's exciting, and, and I hope that uh, you will keep these uh, young people in prayer, as well as these teachers, and you can look at our directory, and you can, you can see our young people. Kind of, you know, don't just pray for names that you don't know, but begin to look at the faces of our young people there in the directory. And when you see them, say something to them. We've got, we've got a faithful bunch right here on the second row. These guys are always right here. Uh, where's Julia? <laughs> There's Julia right there. And, and people say... Isn't that great the way these kids sit up front? But we know why, don't we, Sean? We, we do, and, and they... Uh, but, but anyway, if you join the choir and you can keep an eye on your kids, we'll put them up front here, too. That, that'll be a, You'll know where they are and that kind of thing. But uh, uh, I thought about what to talk about today, and one of the greatest exercises that, that, we, that we have available to us, it's a, it's a privilege, is to pray. Um... I think it was Larry King. Remember Larry King of Larry King Live? He wrote a book on prayer. And I know you can't wait to go to Amazon and go order one of those. Well, they were written, there were, there were sections of it or chapters written by Muhammad Ali and, and Tommy Lazorda, who, who was the coach of the Los Angeles Dodgers at the time. Goldie Hawn, you know, uh, and Willie Nelson. I bet that'd be an interesting chapter. <laughs> As to, uh, oh, Willie, well, that, that's another story. But any, anyway, uh, uh, and, and, you know, prayer is something I guess we all feel like we're pretty good at. You know, uh, until we meet somebody that, that really knows how to lock in. Like, uh, like the disciples, uh, they were raised through the synagogues and the teachings. They knew how to pray. They thought. But when they heard Jesus pray, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. They knew something was, was lacking, evidently, from their prayer lives. I, I remember when I was in school um, and, and finally graduated from Appalachia, you know, the, the teachers were just uh, so excited about me graduating, you know. Um, in fact, two of them graduated with me. Uh, <laughs> They, they resigned that year, and, and I don't know if it was just the thrill of having the number six green child or whatever, and I, they gave merit badges for that or something. But, but, but you know, a lot of them, quote, graduated, and, and I left the, the, the town of Appalachia and went to the great city of Bristol to college, and, and I knew I was free at last, you know, got away from home and... And nobody knew me there, and I could be who I wanted to be. Little did I realize that Mama was praying for me, that I could not get away from Mama's prayers. They were, they were just there, you know? It's like the hound of heaven. They, they were there. They were there. Wherever I went, they, they were there. And, 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 you know, you heard about some of my hitchhiking adventures. And, and uh, wherever I went, over in Europe or wherever, they were there. Mama was was praying for, for that boy that, that was lucky to get out of high school, really, I guess. But, but anyway, she was praying. And, and, and we really, you know, we think, we can pray. We can pray and, until we meet someone that, that seems to really touch the throne of grace. Today, I want us to spend a few minutes, you heard Molly read... And I want to spend just a few minutes talking about or learning a little bit from a guy whose prayer life really shook the known world, a guy by the name of Paul. And just want to share a few things with you and, and because I know there's not, probably not a person here who's never prayed. We've all prayed, so it's not like we're talking about something we, we've never done. It's like driving a car. We think we're pretty good until we get in a car with an expert. 
And that's the way it is when they get in the, in the car of prayer, if you will, uh, with the Apostle Paul. Now, your outline, for those of you who are new, your outline is there in the bulletin. And uh, I'm just going to go through and share a few things with you that, that he says. And, and something that, that he says right at the beginning, to pray frequently. So this is just constant dependence on God. And, and that's what, uh, that's what Kay Ann was talking about when she was leading us through that liturgy, that Jesus is with us and, and, that, and that he's constantly with us. So, so how do we get there from here? You know what I mean? How do, how do we pray? How, how do we pray just frequently or constantly? It, it's not an appointment so much that we make with God. It's a conversation that we constantly have with him. It's like our next breath. Most of us here this morning are breathing. <laughs> you may want to check the person on the left and then the right. That if someone is sitting there like this, <laughs> we'll just say they're breathing by faith, right? But, but just like the next breath, it's, it's a constant thing. My brother Sam, years ago, Sam's an undertaker, you may have guessed that, but, but uh, Sam, he married a girl that was not a Christian, and uh, Sam's a, a godly man, and so he began to pray for her. And I mean, he prayed all the time. He prayed constantly. I walked in the office one day at the funeral home, uh, upstairs office, I walked in and he's on the floor. I was just a kid then. He's on the floor, he had his face on the floor, and I thought, he's lost it. He is sick. I thought he was looking something. I was... and, and, and there he was on the floor mumbling. And I went downstairs to my, my mother. I said, uh, Sam's lost it, Mom. He's upstairs with his face on the carpet. And uh, she said, really? She said, he's praying, Joe. And, and even sometimes when I was with him, I could see his lips moving. And I thought, this guy is off the deep end. He's crazy. And then one Sunday morning or night, I can't remember which, if it, it, it's one or the other, we know that. But one Sunday morning or night, they were sitting right back here where uh, Mary Sue's sitting. And, 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 uh, and the preacher preached. And I don't know if he gave an altar call or what, but she got up and came down the aisle and the tears were flowing. And I was just a kid sitting sitting right here in the middle about where Don Bales is. And, and, uh, and I watched her go by. And I looked back at Sam. And, and big tears. I mean, Sam was just in another world. And, and since then, you know, I see how God has blessed that relationship. But it, but it was paid for in a sense, of course, with the blood of Jesus, but also with the prayer life of an old undertaker, young undertaker at that time. You know, he's an unusual person. Uh, when you're sick in the hospital, it, it, doesn't, it shouldn't thrill you to have an undertaker come and visit. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a little different situation. You know, I told you one time that, that when business was bad at the funeral home, we didn't know how to pray. <laughs> you, you know, you, you say, Lord, business is bad, and you lose a friend. You really don't want to die. Yeah, how's that work? But, but anyway, you know, Sam is, is known. He and Charlie to come in and they'll, They'll pray, and, and they'll pray for the sick in the hospital, but praying at all times. Look at, look at, look at your scripture. In 1 Thessalonians 5, from the message, pray all the time. Again, it's like breathing. It, 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 it challenges this idea of just a quick prayer in the morning or at night, doesn't it? Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so again, you say, well, here's a secret right there. That if you're a Christian, the Spirit of God is in you. So rely on Him to help you pray. In the power, isn't that what it says? Ephesians 6, Paul wrote that, the one who wrote 1 Thessalonians. He said, pray in the power of the Spirit, that God will, will be there. Now listen to me, we're talking about exercise, right? Remember, last week we talked about exercise. This is the exercise of prayer. I found this Irish proverb this week. You've got to do your own growing, no matter how tall your grandfather was. 
that no matter how great or tall your kinfolks have, have risen in, in their walk with Jesus, we got to grow our own, right? We've got to grow our own walk. And part of that growth comes from prayer and empowered by the Spirit of God. When you don't know what to pray, he will lead you, and we'll see that in a second. Again, the scripture in Luke 18, Jesus tells his disciples a parable. And he tells this story about this lady who, this, this old lady comes to this judge, and he's, he's an unjust judge. And, and, and she's pleading with him for justice in a situation in her life, and he ignores her. And finally she bugs him to, to finally, he, he grants her request. And Jesus said, here's an unjust judge that, that grants someone who's persistent. How much more will our Heavenly Father listen and, and respond to our prayers? You see that? That's in Luke 18. So what do we do? I thought about this. How can we exercise this? Now, this, you're going to think this is crazy, but, but think about this. Consider this. Pray the first two minutes of any situation. You get up in the morning, pray two minutes. Two minutes. You, get, you, eat, you eat breakfast. How long do you pray over breakfast? If somebody prays a minute, you know it's too long and you already got a, some Cheerios in your mouth. Time to say amen. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Two minutes. Two minutes. You get, you're driving to work. You've got time. And you've heard me say this before. If you've got time to worry, you've what? You've got time to pray. That's right. So you're driving to work and, and, and you pray. It's just, it's a constant prayer. It's just flowing. You say, I can't do that. You can because God is within you. God is within you. Martin Luther said this one time. I, I thought this was so cool. I wish I had said this. He said, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance. It is laying hold of God's willingness. I like that. See, it, it, it's not about trying to trick God into answering our request or granting our request but it's laying hold of his willingness. Oswald Chambers said, in the first waking moment of the day, you learn to swing the door back and let God in. Every public stance will be stamped then with the presence of God. That when you begin to pray for every situation in your life, those two minutes, that, that when you begin to pray that God's presence is in everything you do, you're praying about a situation, you've got God's presence in there. You've got a challenge, God's presence is there. That's what, that's what K.N. was talking about today, that you're inviting Jesus in on every situation. And there's no impossibilities then, because Jesus is there. Maybe bigger than you, but it's not bigger than him. You understand that? You're there? Two minutes. Two minutes. I think you can do that. Constant prayer. Secondly, pray passionately. Pray passionately. God, God, I want what you want. You know that? I want what you want. Look at the scripture, Matthew 6. This is from a Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, when you pray, don't be like those show-offs who love to stand up and pray in the meeting places and on the street corners. They do this just to look good. I can assure you that they already have their reward. This isn't passion. This isn't heart. This, this, you know, we don't pray looking for for uh, looking for recognition, our passion is with him. You know, when, when I look at Beth and I, I say, uh, I say, well, I, I love you, Beth, you know. Don't you know that thrills her? <laughs> no, it doesn't. But when I said, hey, baby, come over here, you know, <laughs> and say, different ball game, There's passion. And, and that's the way it ought to be with God. It ought to be passion. You know that? That, 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 that to approach him knowing that, that no one loves you like he does. Nobody loves you like he does. So you don't intrude on his day, oh brother. It's green again. How many times is he going to do this? Two minutes here, two minutes there. Come on, green. You know, it's not like that at all. It's, he, he hollers at the angels, and it's Joe again. Gather around. <laughs> passion. You have that? Now listen to this. This is rich. This is from Romans 8, 26. 
In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us with groans that words cannot express. Wow. You sit in God's presence, you don't know what to pray, and something just begins to flow out. You know? That, that, that even with a groan, he intercedes with us with words that cannot express. So how do we do this? Here's the exercise. Look at this. Look at this. Pray out loud. Let me say what? A lot of us pray in our mind, you know. Amen. You, you know what I'm saying? That, that we, I used to have a convertible. I miss that car, but, but I used to have a convertible. And, and I'd pull up at a stop sign sometimes, and I'd be just singing out. Have a song on the CD or whatever, listening to radio or sing Christian music or just singing out. You know, come singing to God and you don't have a roof above you. You're letting it flow and you look over next, next to the car or, or, or the car in the next lane and they're, they're kind of giving you that look. And you roll down your window or you don't have to in a convertible, you just holler, but he rolls down his window. You, you holler at him and say, and they'll put their window down and you'll say, the song is Amazing Grace, we're on the second verse. <laughs> and as soon as the light's green, he's gone. <laughs> but praying out loud, Jesus prayed out loud. When he was on, when he was on Calvary on the cross, what did he pray? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He prayed out loud. The disciples heard him pray, and that's why I said, Jesus teaches how to pray. He prayed out loud. Pray out loud. Secondly, pray through the Psalms. Um, you know, uh, there's always something in the Psalms. You lose a loved one, or, or, or your health, or, or whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, or you just want to get close to Jesus. Pray through the Psalms. I mean, it, it'll change your life. It really will. You with me? Thirdly, thirdly, pray specifically, specifically. Matthew 7, again, the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew. This is 7. Jesus said, keep on asking, and you'll be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open. Wow. Isn't that something? What are you praying about right now? You know, what are you knocking about? I get calls all the time about situations. And I know that person's praying. Look again, Hebrews 4. Let us come boldly. Let us come boldly. Let us come confidently. Not because of who we are, but because of his love. We know he loves us. We don't intrude on him. You know, we don't intrude on him. Come boldly to the throne of our gracious God and there we will receive mercy, his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it. Come humbly and know that he's waiting for us. John 14, from now on, whatever you request along the lines of who I am, Jesus talking, and what I am doing, I'll do it. That's how the Father will be seen for, he, for who he is in the Son. In other words, when you pray in Jesus' name, we're saying... That, that's talking about who he is, what he's doing in our lives. Just a, you know, we thought it was just a tail end of something, you know. It's like when we end a service and, and, uh, and, and we're singing and, and I'm, I'm giving the benediction. What are you doing? You're looking for your purse and, and uh, are, are, you're going like this for sure. Wow, I didn't know it was that late. But, but you know what I'm saying? That, that, that you're checking it when really we're adding the blessing of, in Jesus' name. It's not a time to miss or, or to quit what we're doing. Pray specifically. Now, what's the exercise? And I've got to move through this. I, I, I did happen to look at my watch. You know, my wife bought me a watch for my birthday because my other one finally died. And, and uh, I, I was really happy till I began to think about that. And I have a feeling that, that that was a request from the congregation. <laughs> so 
So what's the exercise? How do we pray specifically? First of all, pray for God to remove obstacles. You know, uh, um, a lot of times, relationships or feelings about things, you, you know, we say, uh, Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will is done in heaven. But we're saying now we want it done on earth, Lord. Do it, do it on earth. Do it in our midst. Do it among us. Whatever the obstacles are, get those out of the way because we want the will of God, the reign of Jesus to be there. Look at the scripture. May God clear the way, the bears of doubt. You know, those kind of things. Uh, secondly, pray for God to increase love, to, to overflowing. You know, pr- have you ever prayed for somebody unlovable? Whew, that's hard to do, isn't it? isn't it? Do you ever have trouble praying for people that, that you don't like? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That, that, that really, we pray for God to increase. If you really begin to pray for somebody, you're going to start loving them. It's going to begin to happen. You know, it, it will. It will begin to happen. Um, When, when, when you eat, when you eat stuff that doesn't build muscle but builds fat, you know, you do know. <laughs> when you pray, when you pray for somebody or a situation and it doesn't increase your love for them, then you're getting fat spiritually. You know, it's not good that, that when you're really praying from the heart and passionately, there ought to be an increase in your love. You with me? Pray for personal growth. May he strengthen your heart. Uh, prayer can be a, uh, a selfish pursuit. Let me give you the prayer of one of the theologians of the 60s. Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? I, I remember that? Who, who did that? Who is that theologian? Janice Joplin, that's right. It was a selfish pursuit. Pray, and then D, pray for his will. Now this is 100%. Um, God wants to do something great in your life. We pray for somebody, and they're in a bad situation. We say, get them out of the situation, Lord. That's a 5% thing, so to speak. When you pray 100%, you seek his will in that situation. That, that life... It, there's growth all through life, you know? There's all, through, all through life there's growth. And if you're just praying about that situation instead of praying for the whole thing, 100%, Lord, we want everything you've got. We want everything you've got. We want this person to be everything that you created them to be. It's not just about, about getting a car or whatever. That can be, sometimes that can be a, 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 almost like a preview that God is in this thing. He is providing, but at the same time, we want the whole thing. We want everything, Lord. We don't want to miss out on a thing that you have. Now listen to this. Gordon MacDonald said this. Man finds it hard to get what he wants because he does not want the best. God finds it hard to give because he will give the best and man will not take it. Is that not powerful? Hear it again. Man finds it hard to get what he wants because he does not want the best. God finds it hard to give because he will give the best and man will not take it. God wants to do something great in my life and all I can think about is how to be comfortable. How to, how to take the easier route. And God says, take this route, Joe, and you'll get the best out of God. And that's what we want, because he wants to give us the best he's got. You believe that? Hello? He knows what he can do with your life and mine. If we can ever find that out, if just pursuing him, watch out, world. Wow. Paul says, I want you to be blameless. Blameless. And, and holy, when we're together to end. That's the thing. Pray with the end in mind. When our Lord Jesus comes. Pray not just for the uh, events of the day or, or your children's desire, but really talking about personal growth takes a lifetime to answer. So we pray. We pray. 
One, uh, one, final, one final quote, and uh, this is an anonymous quote that I'm not sure where it came from, but uh, I wish I had said it. I thought it was pretty cool. Someone said, when you rely on organization, you get what organization can do. When you rely on education, you get what education can do. When you rely on eloquence, you get what eloquence can do. But when you rely on prayer, you get what God can do. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in, in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. Father, thank you for the, for the avenue and that we have in prayer. I pray that, that each one of us would be hungry for your best. Lord, that, that we'll not be satisfied with just a circumstance or a situation of being changed, but Lord, we'll want your best in every area of our lives, in every area of our children, our grandchildren's lives, Father. Lord, Lord, make us hungry to have the best that you've got. Let us be a people that, that our lives can be a, a real signboard for you that can be an example of what you can do, Lord. Pour out your spirit afresh as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The hymn is number 2070, which is in your paper back there, The Faith We Sing. And uh, we'll stand as we sing together. He is exalted. You are exalted. You are exalted on high. Lord, live your life through us this week and remind us that daily, every part of our lives, we can know your presence. We can know your presence. Be assured, Father, that whatever we're involved in, you are there. And because you're there, you are the difference. So, Father, just remind us and keep us, Father, a, a, just in prayer, just holy, Lord, just in that conversation with you day by day. And we give you all praise in the name that's above every name, King of kings and Lord of lords, the name of Jesus. Amen.